Hi, I'm Miss Cook. Welcome to our reading lesson for today. You will need a pen um, or pencil and something to write on, either a paper or a journal. You can also use quill and ink. A quill is a feather that you dip in ink and then write with that on parchment paper, like some of my favorite fiction characters use. In this lesson today, we will read here and discuss summaries. Um, we will explore what a summary is, and we will think about reasons for our opinions that we have on summaries. Welcome to Miss Cook's Reading Corner. Today you are uh, with me in my dining room on my cozy little bench. We are going to do some reading and talking about summaries together, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about me first. First of all, you might hear some pets. I have four pets, two cats and two dogs. The dogs you may hear barking are Dodger and Mr. Echo. They're friendly and fun. The two cats are Rocky and Sirius Black. You might see or hear one of them walk across the screen or meow in the background. Well, you might have guessed that I like Harry Potter a lot because one of my cats' name is Sirius Black, who is a character from the Harry Potter books. And right now I'm rereading um, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, one of my favorite Harry Potter stories. Um, it's keeping me comfortable and letting me check in with my favorite characters um, when I have time to sit around and read at home. Maybe you're experiencing the same thing since we're all learning from home right now. I teach at Broadview Thompson. I'm a four or five, uh, fourth and fifth grade teacher. And I miss it so much. I miss my classroom. I miss my students. I miss my the, all the other teachers. And I miss being at school so much. So hi, Broadview Thompson. Know that I miss you. And I'm sure all you students from other schools are feeling the same way. So I'm glad we can be here uh, learning together. One of the things that we do a lot at school, especially um, during reading and writing lessons, is turn and talk. And since we're at home, you don't have your usual desk partner or table partner that you can turn and talk to. So we're going to be creative and think of different people or things that we can talk to. So you can use a pet. You can talk to your brother or sister or maybe an adult that's in your house. You can imagine one of your favorite characters from one of your favorite books that you would like to talk to today. Uh, I am going to use one of my favorite stuffies. This is Hedwig. Hedwig is also a character from Harry Potter. It's Harry Potter's owl. And I have this Hedwig here with me today. And Hedwig is pretty handy because Hedwig can turn and talk to me. Hedwig has kind of a puppet sort of thing. I don't know if you know about owls. They can turn their heads all the way around 365 degrees. So Hedwig and I can turn and talk to each other for our lesson today. So see if you can find someone or something or imagine someone or something that you would like to talk to during our lesson today. One thing you'll be doing today is thinking of opinions. And when you have an opinion, it's important to have reasons for your opinions. And when you share your opinions and you want to tell someone your opinions, you want to give that person the reason for your opinion. And a good way to start that sentence is the reason I think this is. And then you follow up with your opinions. A River Ran Wild by Lynn Cherry. You might recognize this cover from Lessons with Mr. Barr. Today we're gonna talk about this book just a little and go over some important parts of the book and see what we think about building a summary from what we read in this book. And then we'll read the summary from this book. We can see what we think about how the important parts of the book were turned into a summary. So, uh, from this page, let us settle by this river, said the chief of the native people. He named the river Nashaway. Can you say that? Nashaway, river with the pebbled bottom. The Nashaway had lived for generations by the clear, clean, flowing river when one day a pale skinned trader came with a boatload uh, full of treasures. He brought shiny metal knives. At the start of the new century, an industrial revolution came to the Nashaway's banks and waters. Many new machines were invented. Some spun thread from wool and cotton. 
People who lived near the river smelled its stench, stayed far away from it. Each day as the mills dyed paper, red, green, blue, and yellow, the Nashaway ran whatever color the paper was dyed. Marion traveled to each town along the Nashaway. She spoke of the river's history and of her vision to restore it. No longer do we have a river. It's a stinking, smelly sewer. But it wasn't always this way. Once again, the river runs wild through a towering forest greenway. So that was a quick replay of the book. Who remembers those parts and what the details were surrounding those parts that we read? Just those highlighted parts. Maybe what you think will be similar to this summary I'm going to read. And you can read along as I'm reading. A River Ran Wild by Lynn Cherry tells the story of the Nashaway River, a river that ran wild through forests filled with animals. A group of native people settled near the river and named it Nashaway, which means river with the pebbled bottom. These people lived in peace until white settlers arrived and began taking more of the land for themselves. The two groups fought and the native people were driven from the land. Over the years, factories were built that polluted the water, killing the animals, and turning the water murky and smelly. After years of neglect, two people decided to do something to save the Nashaway River. Their efforts led to the passing of new laws that stopped factories from polluting the river. Slowly, the Nashaway's current cleaned the river, and once again, a river runs wild. I'm ready to talk about what I think summaries do with my turn and talk partner, Hedwig. So find your turn and talk partner or your stuffy, whatever you're gonna use today to turn and talk to. And even if it's just thinking to yourself or thinking out loud to yourself, that is great. Let's first talk about what does a summary do? I'm gonna listen to Hedwig's ideas while you turn and talk to your partner, whoever or whatever that is. Okay, Hedwig shared with me. Did you share? Did you have some interesting ideas or thoughts? Some things that you might have thought is that the summary tells you the title of the book and the author of the book. That's true. That was in the summary from uh, The River Runs Wild. Um, a summary might also tell you, you might have thought, it tells you what the book is about. So it gives you an overview or um, some ideas of what the book is about. Hedwig thought that. Yeah, that was one of Hedwig's ideas. And then another thing you might have thought was that it gives you the story, but in a shorter version, which is true. It kind of highlights the things that happen throughout the story. And then uh, it's but just a shorter version. Just like the summary we read for A River Runs Wild, the uh, summary started with how the book started and it ended with how the book ended. So it gave us an overview of what happens in the story or a shorter version of the story. So if you said stuff like that, that's great. If you said something else, also great. Thinking about what a summary does is important. Now let's think of what kind of information is in a summary. Think about what was in the last summary. We just talked about some of the things and maybe you've already thought of it, but take another moment here to think about the summary, um, what kind of information is in it. Hedwig might also chime in. And actually Hedwig wants to talk to one of our other classmates over here. Oh, look, it's Grover. Grover and Hedwig are gonna have a conversation and I'm gonna listen to them while you guys think about what kind of information was in the summary. Okay, so hopefully you came up with some ideas of what information is in a summary. And maybe you thought that um, it will tell you what the book is about so that you can decide whether or, my, whether or not you would wanna read this book or read this story. Hedwig and Grover both thought that they would wanna read 
a river runs wild based on that summary. It gave them um, interest into what that story was about. I got my whole class here really interested in reading this next summary. So this is Mystery. He's an Oracle whale. You've met Hedwig and you've met Grover. They're all joining me to listen to this next summary. You can also listen and read along. These guys are all ready to read along as well. This summary is of Richard Wright and the library card. Let's listen for the things that we think should be in a summary that we've discussed so far. The book Richard Wright and the Library Card by William Miller tells about an important time in the life of Richard Wright, an African-American author. Richard Wright grew up in the American South during segregation. As a child, he loved stories, but his family was poor and did not have much money for books. Because of segregation, Richard could not check books out from the library either. When Richard was 17, he left home and got a job in Memphis. His plan was to earn enough money to move north and start a new life. At his new job, Richard became friendly with a white man named Jim Falk. One day, Richard asked Jim if he could use his library card to check out books for himself, and Jim agreed. Richard had to pretend the books were for Jim, but he managed to check, out, check them out. Reading the library books changed Richard Wright's life. They opened new worlds of ideas and emotions. Richard knew he would never be the same. For the first time, he truly felt free. So stop and think about what was important in that summary, what was included that we've discussed, and maybe some things that interested you thinking about reading this book. So we're going to take a few moments to think about what this summary was about. The Richard Wright and the Library Card Summary. What did the summary tell us that the book is about? And what did we learn about the book from the summary? So just a couple questions for you to think about. Uh, for a few moments here, Hedwig and I are going to also sit and think. So did you have some ideas about what this summary was about? We know it was about Richard Wright. You might have thought it was about Richard Wright getting a library card, but then he wasn't actually able to get his own library card. So we learned that Richard Wright had to borrow a library card and he had to pretend that the library card was for some was somebody else's and that he was going to the library to get books for somebody else. He wasn't allowed to get books. We learned why Richard Wright wasn't allowed to get books because this book was written, a story is being told about a time called segregation. So Richard Wright wasn't able to check out his own books. And you might have thought Richard Wright really liked when he got to check out books. The end of the summary said that Richard Wright knew that his life would never be the same. And he learned about new worlds and new ideas and new feelings from being able to read. So if you thought some of those things, that's exactly right. Maybe you thought of a th couple other things that you shared with your partner or you thought to yourself, and that's all great. Hedwig, how might this summary be helpful to you or others who read it? That's a good question, Hedwig thinks. Do you think it's a good question? Can you think of how this summary might be helpful to you? or to somebody else who read it? Using a summary is important. We read two summaries today, one from a book that we've read and one from a book you may or may have not read, the Richard Wright summary and the summary of A River Ran Wild. So a summary might be helpful to do a few different things and we've discussed them think about them and we'll be using them in the next few lessons so one thing it does is make sense of what we are reading to remember the important information in a text so the important parts of the text come through in a summary to remind us what the text is about 
or to give us information about what it's about if we haven't read it yet. It helps communicate what the text is about. So it tells us what it's about so we can decide whether to read it or we can remember what we read if we've already read the story, kind of like we did with A River Ran Wild. Read a fiction book. So IDR, we do this at school, independent daily reading. You can see I'm going to go into my independent reading now and I'm reading one of my favorites, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This version is really cool because it has pictures and I'm going to sit and read and look at these pictures for 30 minutes and I hope you do the same. And while you're reading and while I'm reading, I am going to practice my uh, thinking about summaries. So thinking about uh, what is important in the text and the ideas that I'm having or things that I'm learning as I'm reading that are important that I could use in a summary. So as you're reading today for your 30 minutes of IDR, think about what is important that you're reading. You stop every few minutes and think about that or any time that something important um, comes to you as you're reading. So 30 minutes of IDR after we finish today is great. So here's some tools for you to get books online. You can go on the Seattle Public Schools website and the student family portal will allow you access to get some of these um, great books right at your fingertips. So visit those webs that website and use these tools to get a book if you don't already have one or maybe you need a bunch more. So thanks so much for joining me today. I'll be back with lesson two in this section tomorrow and I can't wait to uh, be there with you again. Bye!